A swarm of bees settled under this table in someone's backyard, and I was called to remove them. These bees had not been there for very long, but this family's yard was not the best place for them to live. So I offered them a new hive, and I got to work moving them in. A swarm is a honeybee colony's natural way of reproducing, and it's how honeybees survive as a species. The bees in this swarm under the table started as one much larger, stronger colony, but they flew off and they split to create two. When bees swarm, on average half of the bees leave their existing hive. They take their queen and as much food as their stomachs can hold, but they leave everything else behind. They leave a bunch of worker bees, baby bees, and food so that the colony can make a new queen and start again. This means that this swarm had no honeycomb, food, or baby bees, and I could just scoop these bees up with my hands. Handling bees like this, or in any manner, takes a lot of practice and patience. But these bees were very gentle, mostly because they didn't have a hive to protect, yet I was hopeful that they had a queen. So with each handful of bees I scooped into the new hive, I was looking for the queen. Soon I found her hiding under the table, so I put the queen in a clip to keep her safe and I put her in the new hive. A few days after the bees settle into their new hive, I'll release the queen from the clip. The bees that were already in the new hive were going towards their queen, but I needed to get more bees in there with her, so I just kept scooping. For me, scooping bees is just an easy and gentle way to move them into their new hive. Swarming can be a very vulnerable time for the bees. They don't have any resources and they're at the mercy of nature and the world around them. They can die if they don't find shelter and they can starve if there aren't enough flowers in the area for them to forage. This is one reason that planting flowers, shrubs, and trees that bees and other pollinators will feed from is one of the best things you can do to help them. Unfortunately, less than 25% of swarms survive their first year, which is incredibly sad, but you have to keep in mind that this risky endeavor is necessary for the survival of the species. And beekeepers can often give swarms a better chance by offering them a safe place to live, a hive that's ready to go, and food to help them survive. It was important for me to get all of the bees into the new hive as quickly as possible so they wouldn't try to swarm again. These bees are in swarm mode, and sometimes during the removal process they'll try to take off, occasionally even leaving their queen behind. So I just kept scooping. I scooped nearly all of the bees I could, but the handfuls were getting smaller, and there were still a lot of bees on the table who didn't seem to know that their queen and colony had moved. So I gave the bees a little bit of smoke to help them go in the right direction. The smoke does not harm the bees. They just don't want to be around it, and they move away from it like we do. So I used my smoker to herd them into the new hive. Pretty soon, the bees started to recognize the hive as their new home, and they were rushing to get in. The bees in the hive started to send signals to yell at the other bees by fanning out a pheromone telling them to move into the new hive. I stopped smoking them as I saw this behavior so I wouldn't disrupt this communication. The bees and I were on the same team. We just wanted them to have a safe place to live. So I watched and I waited for the bees to move into their new hive on their own. After the bees got into the new hive, I closed it up, but not all the way, of course, as more bees would follow as I slowly walked away. I loaded the hive into the back of my truck, and it was another great day of saving the bees.